how do compounds at GLP-1 receptor agonists, GLP-1s, enhance patient outcomes compared to commercial available versions? And what unique formulations have you found most effective in your practice? So, uh, you know, again, the, an, the, it's amazing this, uh, this peptide that was developed because truly it gets at the heart of people's metabolic dysfunction, which is helping to eventually improve the insulin sensitivity. It also has an impact on slowing the absorption of carbohydrates into the di from the digestive tract, which also delays the re release of insulin. So it helps to make a person more insulin, uh, I guess, sensitive. sensitive. Yeah. Uh, so who would have thought being sensitive would be good? Well, you like always told you that. That's right. And mine did too. And, and we're better people for it. That's right. So uh, for when it comes to insulin sensitivity, uh, using GLP-1s by the prescriptions, the Ozempic and Manjaro, they work, but sometimes uh, they do have some pretty significant side effects if it's too much too quickly. Mm -hmm. Even the lowest starting dose for some people can bring on the side effects, which could be like nausea or... De now, of course, that's partly how it works. It helps to decrease appetite. But if it's too strong of a signal, right. then a person will feel nauseous. Right. And that's where compounding pharmacies really shine because uh, a doctor who has some experience using prescriptions can think to themselves, well, is this person more sensitive? Do we need to start at a lower dose? So you go pretty much as low as you can possibly draw it up. Yeah. And I might start dosing. Well, and hence, that's wh exactly what we do for a lot of patients is we might reduce the semaglutide, the terzepatide. Uh, I never know exactly which is the r perfect one for people. I have different favorites at different times, uh, but generally they both work very well. And in fact, uh, sometimes I'll, I'll go back and forth depending on what a patient's, yep. uh, how their success is being achieved. Yeah, the, uh, the latest microdose in GLP-1s is like really booming. Uh, we're getting a lot of um, interest from providers and it's it's pretty amazing if you look at overall how many conditions fall under that autoimmune blanket um what do you consider a microdose i'm curious yeah that's a good question so it's about a quarter to a half of the lowest doses and that's basically what we're using Our i mean you don't have to go super crazy up and up but you're yeah you're just okay. yeah for the semaglutide it might be starting at Instead of 0.25, you're starting at 0.1, yep. 0.2. Yep. Uh, and uh, for terzepatide, it could be starting at 1 or 1. 1.5. Yeah. yeah. And yet, yeah, we've also noticed that people can get an anti-inflammatory benefit from that for uh, like unexpected benefits for people with like chronic achiness from Lyme disease. We've seen it have an impact. Or uh, also, I think that the there's enough Expected benefits that it can help with blood sugar regulation for people that have cancering processes or are susceptible. Yeah, obviously that's uh, not that's uh, uh, off label, but it's it can be beneficial. And then of course, there's no question it helps so much for the weight loss benefits. Yeah, it, I know what you know. Right now, when you have like a overweight and obesity rate in the country, that's like fifty to seventy five percent of Americans. It's remarkable. And again, that goes back to how did that happen? Well, part of it's the foods that, the processed foods that a lot of people are eating. And then also the pesticides, plastics, and preservatives, which then are the endocrine disruptors, which cause the worsening insulin resistance. And then the GLP-1s help to come in to decrease the inflammation, improve blood sugar regulation. Mm -hmm. So people have less cravings. They have appetites under control, which means better focus, better concentration, they're more productive. Even social media addiction, some people have found when they're using GLP-1s that aren't as forced or feel so compelled to doom scroll yep. or um, any kind of other addictions. It doesn't have to be just... Well, less alcohol consumption, less cannabis consumption. Yep. It's it really that blood sugar fluctuation affects people in so many yep. unwanted ways. Yep. Some of the talk is also in regards to these peptides like GLP ones is this like cycling of peptides. So and which is nice because people don't want to hear that they're on the same medication for the rest of their life. 
So sermorelin is another peptide that's not as popular, but it's like a pretty cool like uh, sidekick to the GLP ones because the GLP ones do cause weight loss, but often cause muscle loss, mm -hmm. stomach issues, and sermorelin actually helps with muscle gain, muscle rejuven rejuvenation. So how do you use it in your practice? How do you use it with GLP ones, without GLP ones? How does sermorelin basically factor into your okay? Well, remember, when a person's on a GLP-1, we'll definitely make sure they're on a high-protein diet. They cannot skimp on that, but they'll cut back on carbs. And then with sermorelin, which is a growth hormone releasing hormone, uh, basically, it, it's we know that growth hormone has a lot of benefits. Uh, there are ways that the body can make growth hormone on its own, like if a person is in a fasted state before they work out, or if they're getting the deep restorative sleep, their body's producing growth hormone better. But as we get older, we're just not making as much as we used to. And hence, that's part of the reason why people think that they're getting sarcopenia, which is the loss of muscle mass as they get older. So things like sermorelin is very useful to take five days a week at night on an empty stomach, yep. which then helps the body to naturally produce growth hormone in a pulsatile fashion mm -hmm. before they go to sleep. And, uh, and, and just like you were suggesting, the benefits of that growth hormone surge is to improve the signal to make muscle yeah. and burn fat. Yeah. So yes, you're right. Those two work together yeah. very well. Yeah, it's amazing. And the, like the cycling of it, doing uh, going on and off of these. And I mean, ideally you want patients to the point where they've adjusted their lifestyle that they don't need these peptides that they're naturally producing it from lifting proper diet. So it's kind of like this like... Um, push in the right direction. Yeah, it's it enhances say healthy lifestyle and diet. A person has to has to do the diet with this in order to get the best results and couple that with some exercise which could be four times a week for 40 minutes of some kind of resistance training. And uh, if a person is un, you know unsure of how to get started, they should work with a trainer or one of the local gyms. There's lots of ways to to get started with that. Even by the way walking can be great after dinner that's how it start oh yeah uh that combo glp1 and sermorellin is really quite potent 